Thank you, Pastor Ginger, and good morning. 2020 has reminded us and the rest of humanity that we can still be humbled by the world God has charged us to be stewards with. COVID-19 is a story that will continue to unfold and a story that does not necessitate we succumb to its burden. I'm here this morning to share a few thoughts and reflections and set the scene for all saints as we seek to celebrate the blessings revealed to us in the upcoming holiday season. 
COVID-19 came swiftly, and the leadership and congregation of All Saints responded in kind. It was only a matter of days to go from what, we, what do we do to having a spirit-filled celebration of worship in our cars, complete with broadcast sound and sermon. The response stimulated innovation and through bold action has preserved the sense of community within this congregation and enabled the ministries of All Saints to continue their great works. Along the way, All Saints has rediscovered the beauty and opportunity our campus can provide. We no longer see our parking lot as a corral for cars, but as a sanctuary. The Kessner Center is once again a venue of joyous activity with almost daily programming. And now more than ever, All Saints is a place in our community. In a world forced to say no, All Saints has found ways to say yes. All Saints is now a host to three AA groups with expanded Boys and Girl Scouts activities are, and through boy, expanded Boys and Girl Scouts activities are reaching a much broader group of youth within our community. All Saints has also become a venue for a growing number of unique events, including an upcoming advanced screening of a South Carolina ETV new masterpiece program called All Creatures Great and Small. And these are just a sample of all that this congregation has accomplished and what we have to be proud of so far in 2020. This adventure did not come with a, an instructions or a map. Your council has invested themselves in balancing the advancement of the mission of All Saints and its ministries with the safety of all. They monitor the ever-changing conditions, guidelines, and knowledge of COVID-19. This has been and will continue to be a continuous conversation, a conversation among the pastors, the council, the congregation, and a dialogue that has received tremendous support from our safety and security team. Their tireless efforts deserve our utmost gratitude. Born from their contributions, we now have a pandemic response plan. It is a living document that includes reference resources, protocols for the safe use of our facilities, and the conditions to be evaluated as a guide to navigate the path to returning to worship and ministry indoors. Just yesterday morning, Council has taken the next step in expanding the use of our facilities. Small group ministry gatherings of up to eight members will now be allowed once daily in each the sanctuary and the Parish Life Center. These gatherings must follow a minimum set of guidelines, including the required wearing of masks, cleaning, and the separation of the gatherings. A full list of the requirements and areas available for use are available from the church office. Additionally, these indoor activities, along with any other outdoor activity, must continue to be scheduled in advance with the church office. We will not be celebrating this holiday season in our sanctuary. Worship services will continue to be outside through the Advent season, and we will celebrate Christmas Eve service at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. right here in our newfound drive-in sanctuary. In light of this reality, your worship team and their complement of stewards have a vision that will elevate, quite literally, that night of worship. It will also feature the truly missed talents of our musicians. The work necessary to bring their gifts to this service began weeks ago with planning and organizing of professionally recorded private performances. These recordings will grace our ears on that night of worship, be published on YouTube, and will be captured in a DVD to be shared with the congregation with specific attention to bringing the spirit of our worship on that night to those who are unable to be with us on Christmas Eve. God continues to reveal himself in unexpected ways, and I am proud of the resilience, creativity, determination, and leadership and community that All Saints has demonstrated. Our Lord is our center of All Saints, and we will continue to find new ways and new opportunities to worship him and to do his work. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan, and thank you for your leadership.
through a very challenging but very productive 2020 so far. Thank you. We have, we have accomplished a lot. We should all be proud. Thank you. continues to work and we continue to post council notes once a month through the e-news and on the website and so if you'd like to go back and read any notes or minutes those are available either online or through the church office at any time thanks again Nathan we begin our worship on page two of our worship bulletin with the confession and forgiveness blessed be the holy trinity one god in whose image we are made who claims us and calls us beloved amen let us present ourselves to our sovereign god who is full of mercy and compassion holy one we confess that we slumber rather than remain awake for you. We do not faithfully steward your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. Sin permeates us and divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I rem remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to hear from all our kids who are in their cars. Let me hear a honk. All right. Very good. Thank you for joining us this morning. Has anybody ever heard this phrase, you're not the boss of me? Raise your hand. You're not the boss of me. All right, raise your hand if you've ever had to say, you're not the boss of me. Usually in, in every family, there's somebody who has to say that a lot and there's somebody who needs to hear that a lot. <laughs> All right, in your family, who's the boss? <laughs> I see finger pointing. Who's the boss of your family? I was trying to explain to Stella and Virginia this week about the election that happened earlier this month that people voted for who they wanted to be the president. Well, they're, they're four now, and they didn't know what a president was, so I tried to describe it. I said, it's the person who leads the country. It's kind of like the boss. They're the boss, the new boss of the country. <laughs> One of them said, no, mom, you're the boss. <laughs> I said, yes, I am the boss. But every system has somebody that's the leader, whether it's your household, whether it's the nation, but today we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday. Well, Jesus Christ is not the president. He's not the pastor of this church. He's not even the king of the nations of this earth in a way that you would vote for somebody or parliament might select somebody. He is the ruler over every person, household, congregation, nation and he is the king of the whole universe and you don't have to vote for him god put jesus in charge he is the boss of everybody and the great thing about jesus being the boss that we celebrate on christ the king is that if we do wrong he forgives us and if we wander away from what we're supposed to do he has mercy. Mercy means he gently leads us back to him. So on Christ the King Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus is the boss, that God his Father is truly who is in charge, and we give thanks for that because he is a merciful, kind, loving, and forgiving king for us, and for everyone who believes in him around the world. Let's have a prayer about that together. Dear God, thank you 
for sending Jesus. He is the boss. He takes care of us. He leads us. He forgives us. And he loves us. Thank you for loving us through him. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer him, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. I was naked, and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison and you did not visit me then they will answer lord when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you then he will answer them truly i tell you just as you did not do it to one of the least of these you did not do it to me and these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life the gospel of the lord Praise to you, O Christ. One final day, one last Sunday, to sum up what the entire rest of the church year was supposedly all about. Christ the King Sunday is the, has the final say on what has passed and what is to come. Next week, believe it or not, we will have begun the season of Advent, a new church year. And so we have one last chance to lift up what this last year, Advent through Pentecost, was all about. And this is it. Jesus Christ is Lord. On Christ the King Sunday, we lift up the resounding acclamation that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he alone reigns, not Caesar, nor Herod, nor politics, nor economics, nor pressures, or oppressors, powers, or principalities. Jesus Christ is King. And it's appropriate that this comes every November, just weeks after Election Day, the reminder that no matter who is in power in this or any other country in the world, that for those who call upon his name, Jesus alone reigns supreme above all else. No matter what party we're affiliated with or who we voted for, we as Christians pledge allegiance to God's reign through Christ in this world and the next. We pledge allegiance to this invisible kingdom that exists within and around each and every one of us that manifests itself where two or three are gathered in his name and where the least of these are considered and cared for. The kingdom of God exists wherever servants of Christ proclaim in word and more importantly, 
indeed that Jesus Christ is Lord. For many around the world right now, it may be hard to see the kingdom of God at work and active in their midst. In a world where people are hurting, people are dying, where how are we going to celebrate Thanksgiving this year is the least of our worries when our neighbors are wondering, will I find something to eat today? Or where will my family sleep tonight? Or will this be the last time I see my loved one alive? For many, it may be hard to look around right now and see any evidence that Jesus Christ is Lord. In fact, the crises coming upon us this winter may have many facing psychological and spiritual tipping points where they wonder if there's even a God at all. This Christ the King Sunday, this is the world into which we are called not only to see, but to be the kingdom of God. We are called to live out the king's orders to feed the hungry and provide for the thirsty and remember the incarcerated. This season, the numbers of those that who would be considered by Christ as the least of these members of his family are growing and expanding to include hardworking citizens who never thought they'd find themselves unemployed or behind on bills or facing eviction or fearing homelessness. This season, the presence of the kingdom is needed desperately in every corner of our neighborhoods, our nation, and our world. In today's reading from Matthew 25, Jesus describes kingdom living. And he describes it in a way that Professor Dirk Lang has termed living in the spirit of the Beatitudes, living in solidarity with those meek and powerless, embodying care for the hurting and the hungry, all while risking persecution or ridicule for the works of righteousness done for Jesus' sake. In this gospel passage, the king calls to his right-hand side those who have been engaging in the spirit of the Beatitudes. And the interesting thing, Professor Lang points out, is that they didn't even realize they were doing it. They said, Lord, when did we do all of these things? Those who have been living into the inheritance prepared for them by the master weren't doing the work of God to be rewarded, they were simply responding in mercy to the needs they saw all around them. You could call that kind of behavior holy, in a holy ignorance, Lang continues. These people who had entered into the joy of their master didn't even know it. Such participation was not self-evident. The joy that they knew was not complete, though it was mixed with suffering, danger, risk, tribulations, and most likely disappointments, and yet it was joy. They acted out of mercy. They went the way of the cross. Those who were living out the reign of Christ were the ones who saw through his eyes. They recognized when someone was hungry or hurting and they allowed the mercy of the crucified Christ to work through them for the healing of the beloved of God. Society is faced with such enormous challenges this year that almost none of the needs that we see in our communities have gotten better this year. And so it may feel daunting to face these needs head on as we hear Christ calling us to do today. But let's hear the specific responses that Jesus lifts up in Matthew 25. He says, I was hungry and you gave me food. He doesn't say you ended world hunger. He says, you gave me food. He says, I was sick and you took care of me. Not you cured cancer, but you took care of me. All it takes to be the presence of Christ's kingdom in this world is one step. 
one action, one kindness for someone who is hungry or thirsty or hurting or lonely or in prison or ill or depressed. One kindness at a time, one step at a time, the world will see through us that indeed Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus recognized, even in the first century, that the injustices of this world are very deeply entrenched and will not be solved overnight. He knows that for some, true healing and true justice will only be found after they depart this world. But Jesus also acknowledges for us today that each and every one of us can do something to help someone who is hurting hungry or in need. So how are we doing? As a congregation, how are we doing? Are we manifesting the kingdom of God in our midst for those in our community? And as individuals or as families, how are we doing? How are our lives reflecting the truth that above all else, Jesus Christ is Lord? If you want to know how we're doing, Jesus would say, we have to look no farther than to see how our neighbors are doing. Are they being fed? Are they being clothed? Are they being cared for and checked on and remembered and prayed for? If you stay up to, up to date with the All Saints Church News, you'll see that through our congregation, we are doing things to meet the increasing need that we recognize is going on in our community right now. But what you may not hear are all the personal stories of the ways our congregation is helping our neighbors in need. I hear them. As your pastors, Chris and I hear the stories of the way you are shouldering the burdens of those in your community or in your family or at your workplace or in this nation. You'd never know it, but there's a lot of secret service around here, so to speak. And I just have to brag on some people whose secret service to their neighbors truly warms my heart. It's our members who live in senior living facilities. Grace, for example. Grace truly lives up to her name every day when she gently comforts, guides, and reassures her roommate who is in advanced stages of dementia and wakes up every day wondering where she is and when she will get to go home. Or Adele, who takes every opportunity to care for her neighbors down the hall, bringing them little napkins full of food from the community parties if they're unable to go out and attend, and then witnessing to them about her joy-filled faith. Or Dorothy, who whenever she heard that the pastor was coming for a visit, would go down and find her friend Dot and bring her to come in so that she too could be visited and receive communion. Although they are dealing with the restrictions and the loss of independence that often comes with leaving home and entering into a residential facility, I have to tell you these eldest saints of ours are truly living in the spirit of the Beatitudes every day. If they can do it, we can do it. We can do those everyday acts of mercy that our Lord invites us to on behalf of the least of these who are members of his family. On this last Sunday of a year that has definitely been won for the history books, let us say with confidence that above all, no matter what we've endured, no matter what's distracted us or tried to bring us down, that we can stand strong today and say with confidence, with our words, and with our acts of mercy, that yes, Jesus Christ is Lord.
our voice with the whole church of every time and place, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God, and your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God, and your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Sustain all who suffer with the promise of new life. Assured of your presence, heal our pain and suffering, and equip us to embrace all bodies aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We call to mind those who are struggling today, especially for Sally, Sally. Irma, yeah. Irma, Grace, Grace. Bill, Bill. Aloha, uh -huh. Doug, Marie, Marie. Stephen, Stephen, Gwen, Gwen. Phil, Phil, Sally, Sally. Bob, Bob, Lillian, Lillian. Anna, Anna, Janice, Janice. Betty, Betty, Barbara, Barbara. Lynn, Lynn, Chuck, Chuck. and those we name before you now. Be present with all who suffer from COVID-19 and keep us diligent in our efforts to limit its spread. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout our church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you reign forever and ever amen, amen. the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you United by the Spirit as the body of Christ for this world, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as far as announcements today, um, next week is the last Sunday of the month, so there will be communion next Sunday. Um, and then the next time we'll commune um, out here as a congregation will be Christmas Eve. And like Nathan lifted up, we'll have two services um, at 4 and 7, and communion will be offered. Um, also, the angel tree has some new names on it. We haven't gotten our Winwood Farm names yet last week, but there's a bunch of new ornaments there ready for pickup in the breezeway. Um, please try to do that without clumping in there as much as you possibly can. Um, please stay uh, updated on all of our other um, announcements in the parish notes. One more thing I'll just lift up is that one about the YouTube channel. Um, as we prepare to record a Christmas Eve service for those who aren't able to be here um, in person, it would be wonderful to be able to send a real succinct link to our YouTube channel and we did a hundred subscribers to qualify. So if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit the button and then we'll get, we're really close to hitting that 100 subscriber mark and that will get us a little short link that's easy to share with everyone um, as the holidays approach. Now receive this blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we were made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen.
thanks be to God. Satisfied. I'm 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 satisf